this is Rob Reinhold and welcome to our levered ETF series at Maverick Trading. This is where we're going to go through a lot of the levered ETFs and in this video we're going to be going through the SOXS, negative 3x semiconductor ETF. Before we jump into it though, I need to cover what ETFs are just for anyone who doesn't know what they are. Just one second as we go through it. Whenever you hear the term the stock market, that really doesn't mean anything. Look, there's several different exchanges where stocks are bought and sold on a daily basis and they go up and down. There's really no way to say, hey, how are all the stocks doing? And so they created these things called indexes that you could actually track what the market was doing, like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the Standard & Poor's 500, the Russell 2000. And they created these as a way for someone to look at this number and say, oh, the market went up today, the market went down today, but it was just a collection of those 500 stocks that they put in there. In 1993, a firm called State Street created the first exchange traded fund called the SPY or as was called the Spiders. This was developed to deliver the same return as the S&P 500 index. The great thing about these is it was a stock. It wasn't a mutual fund. It wasn't indexed. It could be directly bought and sold like a stock at any time at a really cheap price. This was a great alternative to mutual funds. Before ETFs, if you wanted to get the same return as the market, you had to pay a company probably somewhere around a half or 1% to run the money to try to get you the same return. Now it's as easy as just buying SPY. And these have options, which is awesome. We're an options trading firm at Maverick, so we absolutely love options on these ETFs. Before we get into the underlying index that this ETF tracks, I want to talk about a change that has happened back in 2021. Before 2021, this 3X semiconductor ETFs, they followed the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index, also known as the SOX. As of June 2021, Direxion has decided they are going to follow the ICE Semiconductor Index. So that's just a change, not that big of a deal, but you do need to be aware of what this ETF is tracking. So this here is the ICE Semiconductor Index. Now the ticker symbol for this is I-C-E-S-E-M-I-T. This is an index. So they've put together all these stocks to try to track how semiconductor stocks are doing. Now if you take a look at the weighting of the positions, Texas Instruments is the biggest, Broadcom, as you can see, the largest semiconductor companies. As far as industry group weighting goes, you can see that 80% of the stocks that it tracks are in semiconductors. The other are in the semiconductor equipment manufacturing sector. All right, so this here is the indexes tracking. Now remember, you cannot buy an index. It is not something you can buy, it's just something you can watch. If you want to trade this index, then you have to find an ETF that actually follows it. So let's say you take the ICE, S-E-M-I-T, but you wanna be short. You wanna trade the inverse and you wanna get leverage times three. This will give you the ticker symbol S-O-X-S. This is the S-O-X-S right here. So simply type in this ticker symbol and you will get SOXS and you will see the chart will run just like this. This is simply an ETF that attempts to give you negative three X the return of the ICE semiconductor index. Now the way that Direxion does that is that they're out there buying stocks, futures, options, and they're basically just trying to get this symbol to give you a negative three X return of the underlying index. If we take a look at these two side by side, on the left is the index, on the right is the SOX, you're going to see that these pretty much move opposite of each other, which is exactly what it should do. Remember, this is an inverse ETF, and it also is inverse times three. Now, it's not going to show up on this chart, but you can see that it's moving actually three times more velocity on the right. But as you can see, they simply move opposite of each other, which is exactly what it's designed to do. Let's talk about how to trade this security. We like these for short-term trading vehicles, directional trading. So if you just wanna be long or short, if you just wanna be playing Delta, then these are just perfectly fine to use. However, we like them over a short-term basis, day trading, a couple days, maybe a week or two at the longest. After that, there's some real problems that get into it. Let's go through an example of how to trade SOXS as simply a stock. Here is the SOXX. This is the Bear 3X Semiconductor ETF. And I'm going to be using the bar replay feature in TradingView. If you haven't used it, it's an awesome little tool here. 
I'm going to pull up a chart here. I'm going to come back and hit replay. Now look, I'm on a daily chart right now. Let's make a little bit shorter term chart. I'm gonna to go to a one hour chart. So that means we're looking for a trade that's gonna last a couple hours to maybe a couple days at the most. Now I'm going to hit this replay button and it's really cool because the way this works is I can then go back at any point in the chart and I like to just go back and grab a random moment and grab that random moment and that is the day that I'm going to start my simulation. So this is how it looked on January 22nd at 12.30 p.m. I'm looking to build a trade here. We're big believers of the trend at Maverick, and this is not showing any trend right now. We have a moving averages flip-flopping. We've got moving averages moving sideways. This is not showing us any clear trend. So I'm just going to keep running this until I can actually see a clear trend developing. Once a clear trend develops, I'm very happy to look for a long. And remember, we never want to go short these inverse ETFs. We just want to go by the long one, which would be the SOXL. SOX is for the semiconductor index. L is for long. This one is the SOXS. So we're only looking for longs on these ETFs. Now, we just made a little bit of a higher high. We're starting to get these moving averages moving our direction. I want to see a little bit more bullish price action before I jump into this. All right, so I'm gonna slow this down a little bit because I actually missed my entry there. But that's all right. All right, so we got a nice little break out of this base here. I'm gonna go ahead and say, all right, let's go in and buy it right here. Again, this will be a buy at, let's just call it 46 bucks to make our math easy. And every single trade needs a protective order. Now we're just trading stock. And I'm gonna use the most basic protective order you could basically use, and that is a stop order. And stop orders, we're not huge fans of stop orders at Maverick. There's lots of problems with them. There's much better ways to do things with options. But in this example, I'm going to be putting in a stop here at 4140. Basically, I'm looking at being below this last swing low. Now at this point, it's either going to do one of three things. It's going to come down to 4140 and I'll be out of the trade. It's going to go sideways and go nowhere. And then I got to figure out what to do with it. Or this stock might take off and keep running. And then I have to figure out what to do with it. Now, this is not something you do after you make the trade. This is all built before the trade. So here's my rule. I'm going to be using 4140 as my stop, but my real stop is going to be this 20 period moving average, this red line. We love to attach trailing stops to moving averages. So I'm going to be in this trade as long as this stock does not break below its 20 day moving average. Let's see how the trade goes. Now the great thing about using these trailing stops is you're basically now moving up your stop. At this point, this stop is at 43.60. As you can see, as it's moving your way, you're simply locking in uh, either less of a loss. Once we get to break even, we're locking in a guaranteed gain. So we just got to let this trade develop. We have no idea how long this trade is going to go. So this is the only way to stay in trades for as long as possible. And we're going to be moving stops up. As long as it keeps moving, we're very happy to be in this trade until it breaks below. As you can see here, breaks below and we're going to be out at Let's call it, uh, let's call it 47, let's call it 4760, just for ease of math's sake. So as you can see at this point, we were up much more, but when the stock came down, we were out and we made a buck 60, which is roughly about a 3%, maybe 3.5% return. And that was just over a couple of days. Here's an example of how to use these as a simple trading vehicle. It's all Delta. It's all directional. That's all you're using it for. As you can see, that was basically just like a stock trade. And that's a perfectly fine way to use these. Let's talk about the risk though, because there are risks to using these as just a stock. There's what's called the return differential. Let me give you an example. In March of 2022, for the month, the semiconductor index went down 0.02%. However, the SOXX went down 12%. Now you're saying to yourself, how in the world did that happen? 
how did the index do 0% and I lost 12%? Well, let's get into this. It's called the return differential and it happens on all of these ETFs and especially levered ETFs. Here is the monthly return of the SOXX. Now I'm going to put up next to it the monthly return of the ICE SEMIT. I know a lot of you are good at math, so you'll say, Rob, I'm good at math. So I'm going to come over here, and if in October, the semiconductor index went up 3%, well, I'm pretty good. I just need to times that by negative three. I should get somewhere around down 10%. That's super easy math. Here's the problem. That's not what happened. The SOXX went down 20.5%, 10% more than it should have. How in the world does this happen? Remember, I said Direxion attempts to get negative 3x the return of the semiconductor index. They attempt to. They do that with going long and short stock, futures, derivatives, anything they can do to try to get that symbol to move. Sometimes they get it right and sometimes they don't. And in fact, you can see that there are some months where there is a positive return differential. Now, they didn't even get it right that month, but it did actually help you. As you can see here, there wasn't one month where the differential wasn't 5 to 10%. This is why we don't like these long term. Imagine if you bought it in December of 2021. And during that period of time, you thought that some injectors were going to go down. And you can see that they went up one month, went down this month, went down a little bit this month. It went down three out of the four months. Now, if that went down, you were in the short ETF. They should be going up. They didn't. Look at this. You trailed. The whole time you trailed, you're going to actually be down on the trade, even though during those four months, the semiconductor index actually went lower because of the differential you lost. That's why we don't like these for longer term. The longer you hold these, the more the differential eats away at any of your profits you have until you virtually can have no profit. These are best for day trades, a couple days, a week or two at the most, and that is it. The return differentials are no joke. You have to be aware of those. A lot of people, they have no idea that that even happens and they don't know why their 3X ETF is losing their money. These also come with higher fees. Every time higher fees with these levered ETFs, the fee for this one's around 0.89%. It's about double of the semiconductor ETF. And then we are an options trading firm at Maverick, so we love options. And there are no benefits to trading options. There's only negatives to trading options directly on these levered ETFs. So we do like them for short-term trading. We do not like them for options trading. Let me explain why. The options market is very smart. It knows that these are three times more volatile. So all the options market is going to do is make the options three times more expensive, negating any benefit you have to trading. There is less options trading on these levered ETFs, which means there's going to be wider spreads, more slippage. They are not worth trading. All options trading should be done on the 1X ETF. Usually we only have one per sector. This one is a little bit different. We have both the SOXX and the SMH. These are run by different companies. They are 1X semiconductor ETF. And since they both have about the same volume, they're both going to be very comparable when you take a look at their options spreads and the options slippage. So either one of these is fine. If so, if you're just going to be doing like a bull call spread, long calls, a butterfly, you should never do it on the 3X ETF. There's no benefit. There's only negatives. Do it on the 1X long ETF. That's where all the volume is and the spreads are usually like a penny or two. Much, much better. And the last way we like these and we like these a lot for this is for hedging out portfolios. Let's take a look at using SOXS to hedge out a portfolio. Let's say there is a trader or an investor, and they own $60,000 worth of semiconductor stocks. They own AMD, NVIDIA, and they've owned these for a while, and there comes a point in the time where it looks like the market's going to tumble. And they say to themselves, well, I don't want to sell here. I've held these for a long time. I maybe have some tax consequences, but I'm pretty sure the market's going to tumble and take my semiconductor stocks down with it. Is there anything I can do? Yes, there is. You simply come over on the other side and you buy $20,000 of the SOXS, the negative 3X ETF for semiconductors. 
let's say the call was correct, the market goes down, and it pulls the semiconductor stocks down 10%. This investor or trader lost $6,000 in value on their semiconductor stocks. However, since they bought the SOXX, it goes up around 30%, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But as you can see, they're going to make about $6,000 on their hedge, negating their loss. This is an awesome way to use these, and we highly recommend them for anyone who has portfolios of stocks that they want to protect in bear markets. Before I let you go here, I have to talk about the risk. We talked about the return differential. Okay, that's one of the risks. The biggest risk is that these things can really move. In those monthly returns I showed you, there were some months where the underlying index moved 20, 25%. That means that the ETF was moving 60 to 70% in a month. If you don't position size these correctly, let's say that someone put all of their account into one of these, checked out for a little bit, had a big move against them, they lost their entire account. These things are no joke. You have to understand that you're playing with fire. That's why we only like them for short-term trading. They are way too risky to have them go very long because of the position sizing that people mess up and because of the return differential. We need you to understand how much risk there is on these and treat them very, very cautiously. To wrap this up, we do like them for short-term trading. SOXX is great anytime you want to be short in the semiconductor industry. This is a great little ETF to buy. Options trading should be done on the SMH or SOXX. There should be no options trading done on the 3X ETFs across the board. And hedging. Hedging is a fantastic way to use these. I highly recommend people understand how to use these to protect some of their holdings they have in their portfolio in bear markets. Well, that wraps up the SOXX. Thanks for joining me for the levered ETF series at Maverick Trading. Take care. Goodbye, everyone.